Okay, there's a link to the full text for this problem. It's got six different parts, so I wrote little notes for myself to the side just to keep track of the six things I'm solving for. It's taken off of the 2010 AP Chemistry test. Um, it's a very good question. It encompasses a lot of different concepts, all right? The first question it asks is it says, which is the molecule or ion that is being reduced? Um, that means that there are actually two different ways you could express your right answer since it's saying molecule or ion. And the first thing it asks us to remember is the kind of mnemonic that helps us, oil, rig, or Leo the lion says ger, which tells us that oxidation means I've lost electrons and reduction means I've gained electrons. If I look ahead, it's asking me for the oxidation number of chromium and it's also asking me to balance. So it actually does me no harm to kind of figure out all three things at once here, all right? So I know, looking at the above, I know that the H plus is there to tell me it's an acidic environment, which is important when I'm balancing it. So I know that tellurium is going from this guy to this guy. And if I were to figure out oxidation numbers, I'd say oxygen here, he's not by himself, he's not attached with fluorine, so he's going to have an oxidation number of negative two. There are two of them, so that means negative four in total, which means tellurium must be plus four to make up for it. And then here, um, each of the hydrogens is a plus one. Each of the oxygens is a negative two again because it's not any of our exceptions and it's not by itself, which means that tellurium is going from plus four to plus six. So that means this right here, this is my oxidation half reaction, all right? Um, and I can erase all of that. The proper way then to express my correct answer would either be to say TeO2 or to say Te, that's a four plus charge, all right? Because they specifically say molecule or ion that is being reduced, you actually have two different ways to express that answer. All right, the next thing it wants to know is the oxidation number of chromium. So I go Cr2 O4 2 negative goes to Cr3 plus. This is one of the things that a lot of teachers often will have you memorize. It's a common thing that happens to chromium. And you would just say, again, no exceptions here on the oxygen. So there's a total of negative 14 coming from the oxygen. Something plus negative 14 has to equal a negative 2, since I'm balancing the charges to equal an ion number, which is negative 2 in this case. So that means the two chromiums together must be plus 12, since there's two of them. That means that chromium is actually going from a 6 plus to a 3 plus. So this is my reduction half reaction, okay? So the correct answer for part B would be that chromium is a 6 plus currently, in, when it's in Cr2072 negative. All right, so now we've got A and B. We're just kind of moving right along here. And the next part tells you to balance. Um, the way that I remember how to balance this is because I didn't grow up completely in the US. Um, I have an odd view of Santa Claus. And whenever I picture Santa Claus, I think that he laughs kind of like a ho, 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 he, he, he. So I call this process ho, he, which is just you balance your half reactions first. You write your oxidation half reaction and your reduction half reaction. You then um, balance your oxygens, which you're going to add um, H2Os if it's an acidic environment, which in this case it is. Next, I would balance the hydrogens just by adding hydrogens. Next, I would balance the electrons. Okay, so that's how I remember it. Um, when I look at tellurium right here, the tellurium part is already balanced, so that's my balanced half reaction there. Next, I look at oxygen, and I say there are four oxygens over here and only two over here, so I must add... I must have to add two waters this way. And by balancing out, I'll write Hohe over here. Um, by balancing out my oxygens, now I've left my hydrogens unbalanced because there's four over here and only two over here. So I add two hydrogens to this over here, okay? And then I say, okay, when I look at the charges, nothing has a charge here, so this is zero. There's a plus two over here. I've got to make zero and a positive two add up to zero somehow. So the only way I have to do that is to add two electrons. And I will imagine I would have been a little bit neater, hopefully, if this had been on an actual test. All right, so that one's completely done. And then I go on to my next one, and I say half reactions first. This is a super, super common error. You've got to balance your chromiums first. Your chromium is the guy being reduced. There's two chromiums over here, which means there has to be two chromiums over here. All right, now I'm done with the half reaction part. Next, I go to oxygen. There's seven over here, which means because this is an acidic environment, I add seven H2Os over here. Next, I would do the hydrogens. There's 14 hydrogens now over here, so I just go ahead and stick 14 hydrogens over here because it's an acidic environment. I balance my charges. This is a positive six over here. 
This is in total a positive 12 because I've got positive 14 and a negative 2. So I can only add electrons to make these equal, which means I add 6 electrons to this side. And then the last thing I do is I need to make sure that there are no floating electrons anywhere. So I'm going to multiply one of these equations by a common factor. And I say six electrons going in. That must mean I'm going to need six electrons instead of the two going out over there. So I would multiply this whole thing by three. And since I'm on a whiteboard here, I'll just go ahead and make this six. I'll go ahead and make that three. I'll make that three. I'll make this six. And then that would be my six electrons. So six electrons, six electrons, that always has to cross out. Notice that I've aligned my arrows so that I don't get any sense of confusion when I'm doing this addition. Six electrons going in, six electrons going out. I can proceed, okay? If the electrons don't cross out, you've done something wrong, make sure that you, you know, go back and check your work. And then 14 hydrogens going in, but only six hydrogens coming out. So that means eight hydrogens are going to be going in. That's kind of my net. I've got six waters going in, seven waters coming out. That means there's a water coming out, which makes me really happy because I look back to my first equation and I say, oh, there is supposed to be a water coming out. There is supposed to be hydrogen going in. And then nothing else crosses out. So there's three of this guy. There's one of this guy. And then over here, there's three of this guy. And there's two of this guy. All right. I'm going to pause right here and then come back in a second because I'm going to just go ahead and transfer these numbers up there since I know I'm going to need them. Okay, so what I did during that break is um, I just transferred now my balanced version of the equation up here. I just put the coefficients in front. And then I also put the secondary equation that we're going to be looking at in a moment here um, up here so that we'd have it for reference. So the next part actually was a lot of text and it basically said, you know, there was kind of this um, excess dichromate here, and uh, they titrated the excess dichromate with iron to nitrate, all right? And so the question they ask is just um, how many excess moles of dichromate were titrated? So just to make sure we're all on the same page from a um, understanding the question point of view, what they're saying to you here is this reaction went through, all right? And this must have been the limiting reactant, this was the excess reactant. So after this entire equation went to completion, finished up, there was still excess of this particular reactant floating around. So how did they get rid of it? Well, then they did the secondary reaction, okay? So the first thing they're asking you is, it's just kind of a different take on um, how much of the excess dichromate was there. And the way you would do that is you would say you were given 9.85 milliliters, and this is the way I would do it, all right? There, there are a lot of different ways to do it, but I like to do things in one smooth dimensional analysis way. So I say I've got to get rid of milliliters, milliliters on bottom, 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. This is a true statement. Something crosses out. I'm very, very happy. It was given to me in terms of molarity, which is a concentration, which can always be written as a conversion factor, and I say it was 0.11 molar, which means 0.11 moles of the Fe2+, because it was iron two, uh, iron 2 nitrate, were in one liter. That's all molarity means. If it was five molar, that means it's five moles per one liter. If it's two molar, it's two moles per one liter, 0.11 molar, 0.11 moles per one liter. Again, something can cross out, this is true, so I'm happy. And then the last thing I do is I say for every, and they balanced it for me already, for every six moles of the Fe2+, I only was able to get rid of one mole of the dichromate, Cr2, O7, 2 negative, all right? Again, this is a true ratio, so I'm happy about that. Something crosses out, so I'm happy about that. And then my final answer ends up being 0 0.000181 moles of the CR2072 negative. That's what was in excess, okay? So that's the answer for part D. And then the next question says, well, if that was the excess, how much of it actually reacted, all right? So it's again a nice stoichiom stoichiometry problem. And the way we would say this is, well, this was the excess. I'm just gonna leave it right there and label it, all right? What did I come in with? Well, I'd have to do an equation, so however much I started with, right? If I take whatever I started with, a bunch of it reacted in this equation, and then the rest was the excess. So if I end up doing a subtraction problem, I will have my answer. And I go back and I look and it says, okay, I had 46 milliliters, and again, I like to do things in one smooth um, dimensional analysis way. A thousand milliliters equals one liter. Even though I could do that in my head, I like to just kind of write things out. 
And then for every one liter, um, I was told it's 0 0.03109 molar, so that means it's that many moles of the CR2072 negative per liter. Milliliters and milliliters cross out, this is a true statement. Liters and liters cross out, this is a true statement. And I end up getting here, I'm just gonna actually erase the work so that I can line up my numbers for my um, subtraction. 0 0.001, uh, wow, terrible handwriting, 1, 4, 3, 0. And when I subtract that out, so what I started with in the given molarity of this guy, what was excess, meaning what was left over after I reacted, um, I do that subtraction and I end up with 0 0.001, uh, 2, 4, 9 moles are left. Okay. And then this is one of those, it just goes on and relates and relates back to everything problems. Um, the very, very last question says, well, how many uh, grams of this was actually reacted? So go all the way back to my initial equation. So you have to make sure you had balanced correctly at this point. And you say, this is just simple stoichiometry then. I had this many moles of my CR2072 negative. That took up a lot of space, all right? For every one mole of that guy, CR207, so my dichromate, um, I would have reacted with three moles of the tellurium. And then I'm in moles of tellurium. They want me to be in grams. So I would say one mole of this guy is a molar mass, 159.6 grams per mole. Again, these two things cross out. This is an equal statement, so I'm very, very happy. And my final answer, after I do everything out, ends up being 0 0.598 grams. So that's my answer for part F. It's a very, very long problem, but really it just does a little bit of the balancing, uh, reduction oxidation, and then stoichiometry. Oh, and a little bit of molarity as well.